this world is completely upside down. And that is not the most disturbing part of it all. The most disturbing part to that fact is that the majority does not even realize it. And what's worse is that if you attempt to even bring this up and highlight the delusion, you can be silenced and portrayed as a speaker of hate or discrimination, even though that's not anywhere close to what you are. This can be seen very much through this current topic that needs to be discussed. There has been a shift in the way we have begun to view and perceive roles in this world. It was very gradual, but a quick progression that has now become the standard when at one time it was not even thought of. It has to be covered and reviewed, not with the thought that it will change the world and the majority will come out of part of the strong delusion, but that those with ears to hear have a proper perspective on a topic that seems to have only one major side in this world. Though it seems very easy to see, there does not seem to be a strong group or voice of dissent against this topic. But even the voices heard are not speaking against the biggest agenda surrounding this topic. In this video, I will try to tread very lightly, carefully choosing my words. Because at this point in the game, people are ready to chew you up when they hear one statement that their minds haven't fully comprehended yet. If you are a woman, especially if you are a believer, I ask that you hear me out before you rush to judgment. I am not coming in hate, but in love. It is undeniable that there is a feminism movement, a movement that desires to put men and women as equals. The question we should ask ourselves is, is this thought given by God or the devil? What are the dangers of this thought? And where will this thought lead us? We need to discuss the woman movement, not to bring women down, but to do the opposite and uplift them. There is only power in the truth, and the truth is what has been lost in this upside down world. So I would like to use this soapbox to bring attention to the truth and cast down the lies and strongholds. Let's begin. Okay, so I don't expect to be able to speak to all of the untruths that are surrounded by this topic in one video. This is actually a huge agenda that has been attacking humanity for a long time. We are actually at the end stages of it, but the truth must be told. Last week, I watched their newest propaganda movie that they released to see what it was that they wanted us to feel and know. That movie, Black Widow, was such a major tool of propaganda. Not that it really is any different than any other movie that they make, but you can tell that we are at a point that they don't even care about entertainment anymore. Back in the day, they used to mask their propaganda a little better than they do today. They don't hide the truth about the world at all any longer. Yeah, what would you call it? Um, when was the last time that you had a conversation with somebody that wasn't forced to talk to you? You ran away fighting the war. The real war was fought here in the shadows. You didn't frame the shadows. You hid in the dark. No power comes from undetectable influence. And then they fill up the movie with their agendas that are so plain to see. Like in the movie, all there was were a woman fighting women. I want to say that there were at least 15 to 20 Marvel movies, and not one of them had armies of women when women were just fighting women. I mean, they did try it at the end of the biggest propaganda movie, Endgame, when they had all the women team up to fight. That was very obvious. But this movie here was ridiculous. This movie was completely about an army of women fighting, and the men were either ridiculously weak or not to be taken serious like her father. As I'm watching, I'm wondering so hard, who doesn't see this? But even if people do recognize it, it doesn't matter because we are so far into this agenda. Let's first talk about the agenda. What is feminism? I mean, I hate Wikipedia, but let's use their definition because it does sum it up very well in my opinion. Feminism is a range of social movements political movements, and ideologies that aim to define and establish the political, economic, personal, and social equality of the sexes. Feminism incorporates the position that societies prioritize the male point of view and that women are treated unjustly within those societies. Efforts to change that include fighting against gender stereotypes 
and establishing educational, professional, and interpersonal opportunities and outcomes for women that are equal to those for men. Basically, it is a movement that pushes the notion that women and men are equal, that there shall no longer be a difference between men and women, and that includes the roles that they play in society. It's called gender equality. For the majority, I know that every man and woman on earth does not agree fully with gender equality, but because they agree to certain aspects of it, they allow the full agenda to proceed. Within this agenda, you see propaganda promoting this everywhere. It is something that is constantly being pushed on us from many different angles, but I don't think people really recognize it in this way. This is an agenda that is not made for this current world, but one for the new world order that will arise after the Great Reset. What people don't understand is that we are all being conditioned to accept the principles of the new world order. Our young generation is being conditioned to only know the principles of the new world order. It's so important to understand the mental manipulation that is happening to all of us, especially to those who are just asleep to the world we live in. This is an actual agenda that the world is being forced to accept. When I see it, I don't even look at it as a topic that I need to have an opinion on. I know it's propaganda and I don't allow the mental conditioning to even take hold of my mind. I see it promoted every day. And when I see it, I simply say in my head, oh boy, here they go in number five again. You see, when you look at the world in the eyes of truth, the mind control doesn't connect with you. Now, maybe you're wondering when I said, here they go with number five. Let me explain. That's just one of their 17 goals and priorities of the new world order. They of course don't advertise it in this way, but it most certainly is that when you actually review it and apply the skill of critical thinking. What I'm speaking about is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. You know what I'm talking about. The goals that the countries of the whole world sign and agree to? Regardless of the nation that you live in in this world, you are undoubtedly seeing political movements pushing these agendas and propaganda tools like our entertainment to push many of the ideas like number five. They do not hide this agenda. It's hidden right in plain sight. But the masses have not cared. They have been working on attaining these goals for 20 years since the Millennial Development Goals that ended in 2015. The Millennial Development Goals that ended in 2015 just rolled into the Sustainable Development Goals that have a goal of implementation by the time of 2030. But it's really according to when the Great Reset occurs. In regards to number five, let's see exactly what they say. On the website, it says, Goal number five, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. SDG Goal 5, Gender Equality and Empowering Women Max is married to Anna. They have three children, Laura, Joe, and Mike. Joe and Mike attend a community school near their home while Laura stays behind to help her mother with the chores. Max thinks educating Laura is a waste of his resources. After all, Laura will soon be 15 years and marry his friend, John. Although Laura dreams of becoming a lawyer, Max thinks she only belongs in the kitchen. Like Laura, millions of girls around the world are being denied education and equal opportunities as boys. The SDG Goal 5 aims to end all forms of discrimination against women and girls. Women and girls must have equal rights and opportunities and be able to live free of violence and discrimination. Throughout history, women have never been treated equally as men. Women may be better off today but still far from being equal with men. To achieve the SDG 5, states must eliminate practices like child marriages so that girls, like Laura, can enjoy quality education, and achieve their dreams. Legislation are not enough. Individuals like you can also help create gender-neutral society for all. Start now. You see, this is an agenda. 
It's not by accident that we are seeing all of this propaganda everywhere promoting this way of thinking. We are being promoted a world that they are transforming. They don't even deny it. They tell us consistently that they are transforming our world. But the majority don't understand it. They find goals like ending women violence and agree with that goal enough that it builds support for all the other goals. But we are witnessing a complete change in the way women and men are viewed in this world. We have seen a world that has existed in a certain way for over 6,000 years. But over just one century, a mindset that has been held for millennia is now gone and looked at as wrong and evil. This isn't even just a view that was based on your religion or race or nationality. The overall world held this position, and regardless of the other conflicts that we faced, within nations, there were families, strong families. This mindset of gender equality is not something that is traditional, but something that has been pushed and promoted in a very direct manner over the 21st century, in particular. That is all about us accepting a new satanic world. Now, I believe that in order for everyone to fully understand this, everyone needs a history lesson. Because if we just follow the timeline and history of this movement, it is very easy to see the manipulation and mind control. The only reason we are in this movement is because of the system that has been created by these earthly masters that live in the shadows. They created an economic system that they want everyone slaves to and a part of. And through economics, they forced everyone into their web of control and have promoted equality throughout it all. Before this system was built, before all the land was owned, before all of our food was controlled, before all of our resources was controlled, the way of the world was simple. There was no gender equality being promoted. Most of the women did not beg to be the hunters and bring in the food, and men did not beg to be the caretakers of the families. There were very clear-cut roles for men and women. But now because the system of the world has been changed, all the land is owned and controlled. All the food is owned and controlled. All our resources are owned and controlled. We are now in a new system that those with power and control are deeming how society should be and how roles should be changed. What was once accepted by the world is no longer acceptable in the new world that is being created. Again, I believe that a simple history lesson will do much good for everyone. But in this introduction to this topic, I want to present the overall topic and the overall agenda before we dig into the specifics of how we actually got here. So what I would like to cover in this video is the overall agenda, because I believe people are missing the complete view. I mean, today we argue about how dumb and unfair it is to have transgenders running the same competitions as natural women. We argue about the pay gap and opportunities between men and women. We argue about how crazy it is to hear how many women believe that they don't need a man. How many women fight and debate over taking their husband's last name. Think about how many women won't even consider dating a man before they even try to. There are so many things upside down within this whole agenda. But actually, those are all distractions. And they are small points that are actually very big to all of us. But they still don't allow us to understand the full agenda of what we are witnessing. So I want to make sure that it is seen and known. So I want to make sure that it is covered before anything else is said. So let's go back a little bit into this video when I spoke about this gender equality movement being number five on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I need to make sure that it is understood that these goals are not about today, but about tomorrow. They are about the overall world that they are trying to create. And though we debate and deal with many of these topics in real time today, that is only about getting our mental minds ready for the overall acceptance when the time comes, while they're also able to target identify and pinpoint those who will never accept their agenda and who really have no place in their new world order. The sustainable development goals are about a world that they want to have in their new world order. And the great reset is the action plan and rolling it all out. Now, if it is news to you that the new world order is a satanically inspired agenda, then you may need to go back and relearn some things. You can go directly to my video about the matrix that video should at least be able to give you some background about it all. Also, you can watch my video on the Great Reset for more background as well. But the New World Order is all about creating a world that's values and mindsets are opposite those of the God of the Bible, the God of Israel. 
He has a world that has certain values. He has made creation with certain roles and purposes. And the New World Order is all about reversing those roles and purposes. It is an agenda that is all about the overall goal of rejecting the creator of our world and the people in it and accepting a false god that believes his way of dominion is better. But it doesn't come in a manner of acceptance by a sword. It is first by mental manipulation and choice. But the choice is surrounded by unfair advantages by our enemy who controls all facets of our world through his puppet masters. The point is that the New World Order is all about making Satan worship as our God and Creator, and he desires us to accept his values and traditions and make them our own. Here's the major truth that is not given. Satan hates us. He hates all of us because we are something that he cannot control. He is not able to create life, just manipulate it. He is not our creator and not given the power to give life, except through what he has now done through science. He hates the Most High, Yahuwah, and hates his power. This is easy enough to see from the beginning of the Bible. For most that don't even read their Bibles, they understand this point. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Then Elohim said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then Elohim blessed them. And Elohim said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. That's Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. And Yahuwah Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The God of the Bible is our creator. He is the creator of heaven and earth and creator of every living thing. It is he who has created mankind. It is his power. And this power was not given to any other being to control. Life is a gift from Yahuwah, the Most High. The devil cannot control this power the Most High has. The devil only has power to kill, steal, and destroy. He manipulates mankind, but cannot control creation. Now, according to the Bible, did Yahuwah create women to be equals with men? You see, there is another subtle agenda that is really hard to break down as well. It's really something ridiculous because when this idea was being formulated and spread, they were being hypocrites at the same time by owning slaves and keeping the system of slavery going. In the United States, in the Declaration of Independence, they declared that all men are created equal, which they themselves obviously didn't agree with because they owned slaves. And centuries later, Boulay member Michael King Jr. highlighted this phrase and took over this value statement when he said, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And from this statement, we have this civil rights movement that all men are created equal. But this is a very easy to see untruth. All men are not created equal. If that was so, everyone would be the same height, have the same abilities, be able to think at the same level and do the same things. If it were true, we wouldn't have races and competitions. All men are created equal goes against the Bible and against the undeniable preservation of a very small nation of Israelites that only through the power of the Most High were made to be priests of this world and share the values of the Most High in a world where everyone else believed in a polytheistic view of God. If all men were created equal, the Israelites would not be known today. The truth is that all men are not created equal, but that does not stop our father from loving his creation and providing everyone a way to come to him and be redeemed. But that message of all men are created equal is one that is found within the feminist movement. Although history shows that if this was true, then we would have seen just as many female hunters as male, 
we would have seen more male caretakers than females. These trends and gender roles were all natural before the earthly masters worked on transforming our world. So again, going back to the Bible, did Yahuwah create women to be equals with men? Let's let the Bible answer that question. And Yahuwah Elohim said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Then verse 20 says, So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Continuing to 21 through 25. And Yahuwah Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which Yahuwah Elohim had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And this is why women were created. Not to be made as equals with men, but as men's helper. And regardless of at this present time you disagree with these roles of the past, it is undeniable that this was the way that the world has been for millennia, thousands of years. The amply padded and well-corseted young woman who strolled in New York's Easter Parade of 1903 was supposed to be a companion, not a competitor to man. This is just another reason why the Bible is being looked at as hate speech and a way of outdated thinking. Goal number five of the Sustainable Development Goals is all about going against what the Bible says the role of women are. It is believed that this biblical view is a way of being unjust to women and keeping them down. When in fact, it is the way that we were all created. And when we are in those natural roles, families thrive and grow in strength. But you know what? We could go back and forth in the debate about this topic because the belief in God and submission to his will is something that is more and more absent from our society. So I would not expect a world that has been obsessed with arguing against so much of our father's ways and purposes that they would understand what is being presented by examining the book of Genesis. But here is the undeniable thing and what is missing from the overall understanding of the feminist movement. What's missing is the devil's number one goal. But within this agenda, it is masked for the majority and it is not seen. Now, what do they say is the number one problem with climate change? They even showed it in their propaganda spreader in Marvel's agenda, Infinity War. The problem is too many people. They want to reduce the world population. What does the right to abortion do? It reduces the world population. What does war do? It reduces the world population. What is one of the plans on the Georgia Guidestones? Yes, to reduce the population. There are so many agendas that are being carried out today. What is undeniable within them all is that the major result of all the agendas is a massive reduction to the human population. You see, before I go into really explaining all the other points surrounding feminism and how they all affect society, I want to make sure the number one agenda is highlighted because it is the biggest goal, but most neglected point of them all. Satan hates the Most High's creation. He is in fact a hater of humanity. Though he wants to control us, he still hates us because he did not create us, nor can he. So his goal is always about our destruction and the reduction of our population. His main goal of promoting the feminist movement is not about promoting women's rights and justice. It's about the destruction of humanity, the severe reduction to the population so that he shows that he is in control and that he can control creation by just stopping it. When women feel equal to men, they want to do the same things as men. They want to have the same careers and transact themselves the same way as men do in this world. When they are made equal to men, they choose their careers and care for themselves over bringing life into this world and being a helper to their husband. How many women say they can't find a man but are so eager to chase a career and be this career woman? So many women today don't even understand that that's not really natural and that's the reason why they can't really find a man. As a matter of fact, 
The role of being a helper to a man is completely denied and not even accepted. It's hard to even make married women understand this today. And they're married. This is true even within those women who call themselves Christians. They want hyphenated names and want to be looked at as equals and not in the supporting role of their husbands. They are ready to leave the man whenever they feel like it because in their head, they do not need a man. They raise daughters who are led to make futures for themselves more than make futures for their families. I remember back in the 80s and 90s in a different world when Whitley Gilbert was going to college, but she always had plans of finding a husband there. That was her goal. At the end of her college term, she should have found a husband. But the show showed that that mindset was old and what she needed to do was to focus on her career and become a career woman. It was mind control. This is how they changed our perception. And that was just one small example. But if you look now at my generation, as I look at Instagram, there are more men and women getting married and having their first child in their late 30s, early 40s than we've ever seen prior to this time. Women are choosing to start families later if they choose to have a family at all because they are choosing their careers first. Then they say that they desire a man who fits within the role that they now have created for him. But that's not natural, and it will be very hard for them to find that. But they just don't understand it because that's the way that the world is today, and they are mind-controlled by it. In the Black community, I can speak on what I know certainly to be true. This is especially a huge problem because guess what? This system is not about promoting strong Black men. It much rather build up strong Black women than Black men. That's why they targeted our men with an immature hip-hop culture. But that's another subject. This isn't just about you, ladies. Trust. Anyways, in a system that prefers black women succeeding more than black men, what is the natural consequence of this? Yeah, black women believing they are more successful than their counterparts, and they believe that the men need to come up to their level. It's actually bringing black men down more than helping them get stronger. It's something that many women today don't really want to understand. So in the end, they either end up alone or in very bad relationships. They keep hearing the same things over and over by the man Kevin Samuels. They even go to him to hear the same thing over and over, but they refuse to accept it because they cannot remove themselves from the mind control that was created around goal number five. Now, if this is something that is only happening in a small section of society, then it would be easy to ignore. But it is not. Women are having less children than ever before. And there are women who are choosing to have children without men, period. I have a family member that is praised in our Christian family because she became a doctor. But although she has no man in her life, and I don't think anyone has ever seen her with a man, she decided in this world that she could have a child. So she had a child without one man being involved at all. This is now Satan and his science being more involved with creation than our father is. People are dictating when they want a child and how they want it. And this is all part of a satanic agenda. With recent advancements in genetic engineering, the reality of creating your ideal baby is closer than ever before, if you wish. If you're a potential parent planning on having a baby, you might be able to use genetic testing to choose your child in what some are calling a designer baby. What's worse is that my Christian family supports it. If this is what it's like in places that we call Christian homes, can you imagine what it's like amongst those that don't even remotely agree with our faith? Women have an equal opportunity to education and careers promotes a world more about economics than it is about family. What we see is that women are choosing their careers first. And if they do have children, they do not want their daughters to be held back by the old mindsets of the past. What they do not recognize is that when they say this, they are actually saying they do not want to be held by the God of the old world, but rather the God of the new world that lets them do as they want. The LGBT agenda is also right along with this agenda. Because what happens when both sexes are mating with the same sex? Yes, there is no longer creation. And when humans are created, it's often through the science, which again gives more power to Satan than the Most High. Again, 
most young women I see today are more about their careers and life goals that they have made for themselves than they are about starting families. Our Father's command to humanity was to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. And we see today that the majority of the younger generation are completely against this purpose that Father has created until they have reached whatever goals they have made for themselves. I can go on and on about this, but I think I made the point. The next part must discuss how we got here in the first place. But the main thing is clear. Feminism is not about giving women's rights. It's about stopping creation. The women's right part is about creating conflict and giving women a fight. It's a marketing tool, a way to draw them in. When you create an enemy, people naturally fight almost always without understanding exactly what they are fighting for and against. Now, let me say this, because I know when tackling a topic like this, I will undoubtedly be misunderstood. Please understand, I am not a hater of women, and I am not of the belief that women do not have value. I believe strongly that women have a great value, and you are obviously irreplaceable. I'm not blaming any of you. If this is what you're hearing, you're misunderstanding me. I know you are not completely to blame, because on the other side of this, men are not stepping up enough to be men. And you may feel like you're, they are leaving you no choice. I mean, I get it. Believe me, I am not coming at you. I am just going over the programming and agendas, things that you may not have understood or seen. This is not an attack on you personally. I'm just giving you unedited truth that is trying to provoke thought. You are not the enemy here. I do understand the challenges that are coming at us. Please do not misunderstand me. I am not your enemy. For anyone who disagrees with this sentiment, ask yourself, what would you do if you lived in a different world? If you're a woman and you had to go and hunt for your food, would you be okay with the killing of the animal, skinning them and cleaning out their insides? If someone was attacking your land, would you be willing to stand in front of the men and fight instead of them? Ask yourself, if you were on the Titanic and the ship was sinking, would you be okay with them saying, men and children first? Good. For the time being, I shall require only women and children. Think about this. If a majority of the women in a nation died in battle, that would be the end of that nation. If a majority of the men in a nation died in battle, that nation could still rebuild and repopulate. There's a power in this that women are forgetting. What we are seeing is people being a product of their environment and being herded into this new world order that they have not given much thought on what they are giving up and losing. People are only thinking of themselves and ignoring the consequences of their decisions. We are moving into a world that is being dominated by satanic values and it is imperative that we review our thoughts and understand where they come from and why they are there. We must examine what happens as a consequence of our decisions. From our decisions, what is the future for our next generation? I mean, with this world that we are creating, would there even be a next generation? This feminist movement is highly dangerous and destructive. But if you only look at it from a mindset of what is best for only you, you may never see the consequences of your decision until it's too late. You are not thinking for yourself. You are moving with a predetermined mindset that has been mind controlled into you to get you to accept number five of their 17 goals for the new world order. There is so much more that needs to be understood and identified. But if you don't understand this overall goal, all the other minor goals will be debatable to you. If you love our father in heaven and love his creation, you must support his roles that he created for us so that his system may thrive. Your acceptance of this other way only comes with yourself thriving in a system that is built to enslave you. You have to choose the most high and his ways. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But Elohim, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Messiah. 
by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Messiah Yahshua, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us and Messiah Yahshua. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of Elohim, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yahshua for good works, which Elohim prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. By applying these verses, we see the solution to this agenda is simple. The only question is, will you choose our Father over yourself? Will you choose to walk in his ways or choose to walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, who we know as Satan? Make the choice and choose our Father today and reject the ways of this world. Remember, the choice is yours, so make the right one. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like this and share it with others. If you have not done so already, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I really would like to thank all those who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions have been an extreme blessing to this ministry, and I would not be here without you. I'm very thankful for you. Thank you for being a blessing and your continued support to this mission. Thank you. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.